we'll start talking about the heating side of things. So doing the opposite of what we're doing with the cooling. We've got refrigerant going from the compressor up to that reversing valve, and then going to send that refrigerant, that nice hot vapor, straight from that reversing valve, straight into the BC box. That nice hot vapor is coming in from the outdoor unit, straight into that BC box, and it's going to come into this gas liquid separator again. Again, it's not really acting as a gas liquid separator at this moment in time, because we've only got vapor coming in here. So I take the vapor off the top, so LEV1 in this situation is actually shut because we're not needing to take any liquid refrigerant off. And we send that refrigerant the opposite way through the indoor units. And the way we do that, I've got a set of control valves in here. So A and C are going to be shut when we're doing heating and valve B is going to be open. We send that refrigerant off to the indoor units that need heating. As it goes through the indoor units, it's going to go from being a vapour to being a liquid. And we aim for a condensing temperature of around about 53 degrees on the new units. On some of the older units, it's lower, it's down at 49 degrees. On the base of the indoor, it's working fine. It's going from being a vapour to being a liquid. I've got that liquid refrigerant coming back. And then I use these two expansion devices. So I've got LEV3 and LEV4, which are now acting as the expansion devices. So that's going to take that refrigerant from that high pressure to a low pressure. So beyond these two expansion devices, I'm going to have a mix of liquid and vapour. And I'm going to send that back onto that return leg and back off to the outdoor unit. VRF all in heating. It's got a little reminders. ST relates to strainers. SV relates to solenoid. CP relates to capillary line. And reversing valves, that side of things. So we'll talk our way through it. So starting off at the compressor, we'll come off the top of there. Got a nice superheated vapor and it's going to come up to that oil separator. Same as when it's in cooling, SV1A for the first four minutes of operation is wide open. So don't go near it for the first four minutes. It's going to give you incorrect readings because 80 to 90% of the refrigerant is going around a little short cycle trying to keep the oil near the compressor. Once those four minutes are done, SV1 shuts and we use that capillary line to bring the oil back to the compressor. So come off the top of that oil separator, we've got the high pressure cutout and also the high pressure sensing. Now it's going to be aiming for around about 53 degrees condensing temperature, so just keep that in mind. Okay. So the refrigerant's passing from there, past the reversing valves which are going to be energised, so that hot vapour passes straight from the outdoor unit, past the check valve, and there's a ball valve just as it leaves the outdoor unit. I'll come back to the other bits in the outdoor unit in a minute. So there's that refrigerant entering into the BC box. So this is all the BC box, and we've got four separate indoor units. So taking that refrigerant off the top of that gas liquid separator and we pass it through valve B on the BC box. So each one of these ports has got A, B and C. A and C have been open when I'm doing cooling and valve B is open when I'm doing heating. So valves A and C are shut in this situation. That refrigerant passes through the indoor and it goes from being a vapour to being a liquid. And the way we're controlling that is we're using the actual expansion device in idea that was we're using for doing cooling as a way of throttling that refrigerant as it passes through the indoor unit. Now it's only going to use that as it gets to within two degrees of set point. Other than that it's coming almost straight way through there. Okay. Refrigerant's passing from there and then we're going to pass it through these expansion devices. And the way that we control these expansion devices taking from that high pressure to low pressure is we want to make sure that refrigerants all change form as it passes through the indoor unit. So what we do is we look at PS1 and PS3. So these are two pressure transducers inside the BC box. Now when we're in 100% heating, these valves here and this LEV are all shut. So PS1 measures the, temperature, the pressure of the refrigerant as it's about to go onto the actual indoor units. And PS3 ends up measuring the pressure after it's passed through the indoor units. And what it's looking for is a three bar differential between the refrigerant going on and off the indoor units. So the refrigerant's passing from there, it's now a mix of liquid and vapour passing back to the actual outdoor unit. Comes into the outdoor unit and it comes up to another gas liquid separator. And this is about improving performance on the actual outdoor coil. Because we're going to have a mix of liquid and vapour coming back. And what's the point in putting a vapour through an evap evaporator, it's already changed form. So what we do is take any vapour off from that gas liquid separator and we bypass the actual coil to give it more room within the coil to make that evaporator more effective. So I've only got liquid getting taken from that point and we're going to load up that outdoor coil 
and boil that refrigerant off through the actual evaporator. Refrigerant is passing from there through those reversing valves and we're dropping it back to the accumulator which is acting exactly the same way it was when we we're doing cooling. So I'm going to have a superheated vapour coming back to the actual accumulator. So I'm just taking vapour from the top of that accumulator. Obviously becoming a way of storing refrigerant but it's also acting as a way of bringing oil back to the actual compressor as well. Thank you.